Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. It's good to be gathered together as the people of God here online. Our worship begins with a call to worship. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who had a terrible day. She left her lunch at home. She skinned her knee on the playground and no one wanted to sit with her on the bus. As she sank into her mother's arms at the end of the day, her mother said, Honey, what was the best part of today? The little girl cried and said, Nothing. The entire day was terrible. So the mother got down on one knee, wiped away her tears, and said, There is always some good. Sometimes we just really have to look for it. The little girl looked up at her mom and said, What is good about today? And the mother said, For starters, you're here in my arms. Friends, Anytime we gather together to worship God, we are here in God's arms. So may we recognize that gift, and in doing so, may we so joy. Our gathering song is Awake, Awake, and Greet the Lord. Contagious. I dream of birthday candles in another beautiful year. I dream of family game nights and dinner parties with friends. I dream of homemade Halloween costumes and homemade family recipes. I dream of pillow forts, fireflies, and front porch swings. I dream of every little thing that brings joy, and I know it comes from God. So today we light the candle of joy as a reminder that God's dream for this world involves the end of all tears. God's dream for this world involves a joy that overflows and is contagious. So may this fire burn bright, and as it does, may we sing. May we dance. May we laugh. May we hold onto the people we love. May we sow joy in a hurting world, 
and may it be an act of holy resistance. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the word of your prophets, that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with, with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said, said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears weep with shouts of joy. Those who, who go out weeping, bearing the seeds for sowing, shall, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Hey everybody, welcome to another segment of Crafting and Coloring with JP, Advent edition. Uh, this week we are looking at the story where the angel announces to the shepherds the good news of Jesus' birth. And the coloring page looks a little bit like this. Uh, these are the colors that I have chosen to highlight all the different phrases that the uh, angels uh, uttered when they were announcing the good news to the shepherds, uh, but you can use whatever colors you'd like. 
whatever you do, use colors that bring joy to mind because joy is the word of the week. That's the theme of the week for Advent, for Do Not Be Afraid with Illustrated Ministry. And the activity has everything to do with joy. They've given you a sheet where you can um, write some sort of joy from the last day, week, month, year uh, that has occurred in your life. And it says here, it's hard to see because of the way I colored it, but it says, remembering my joy from. And I didn't really look at it closely as I do. So I said, Madeline graduated. Uh, grammatically, that sounds strange. Remembering my joy from Madeline graduated. So from maybe if I had been paying closer attention, I would have said from Madeline's graduation, but that's one thing that happened in my life in the last year. That's a joy. Um, there were more of these that you could just cut out. Uh, one thing they suggested you do is you could turn it into a scroll, right? Because it looks kind of like a scroll. So I used barbecue skewers, fun. And uh, I kind of taped them in and I rolled it up like a scroll and boom, remembering my joy from Run for Your Life and Costume Parade, the fun activity we did on that beautiful Halloween day just a few weeks ago. And again, I didn't really look at it closely and I kind of wrote it backwards, as you can see. I think I was supposed to start writing over here and move uh, in the other direction or turn it over. Maybe that would have been better. Whatever, you can learn from my mistakes, it's fun. Another thing you could do if you'd like, is you could just like write on it and then roll it up really tight and maybe use a ribbon like I have, like the kind you'd use for Christmas presents. And then uh, you could just then use the like, like the loop from from your 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 tie job. Is that what you call it? I don't know. Uh, and hang it on the tree, and boom, you have something that you can uh, look at and go, ah, yes, I remember that joy. I know what's what's inside there. Maybe you open it up on Christmas. This one says that I went to Christicon twice. Major joy over the summer. So. Those are some ways to uh, remember joy this week, to make joy a big part of your Advent season. And so we are recalling the joy of the announcement of Jesus' birth and Jesus' birth itself. And we are recalling all the different joys uh, over the last weeks, months, and, and year. And we can do that even in a year that's been harder than, than most. Uh, so. God bless you as you do your craft, color your pages, and, and put your scrolls together however you want. And, and uh, may you experience that joy uh, of Jesus' birth, and may you spread it to others. Until next time, this has been Crafting and Coloring with JP, Advent Edition. to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things 
and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from the one who was and who is and who is to come. Amen. Amen. I decided not to preach my sermon for this morning from the sanctuary at CTK. And that was for a couple of reasons. First off, I have this groovy uh, Magnificat t-shirt that you would not be able to see if I was wearing my alb over the top of it. And uh, there's something um, definitely powerful about this that I love, um, thinking about the words that Mary sang in what has come to be known as the Magnificat. And if you're wondering what, what's up with that word, that title, it's from the uh, Vulgate, which was New Testament in Latin, the first word of, um, of Mary's song is Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord. Um, anyway, so that's where that comes from. And as I was reflecting on Mary's song and where it was and with whom she was when she sang it, according to Luke, she was at the home of Elizabeth and Zechariah. Of course, she was greeting Elizabeth and Zechariah was not able to greet Mary. I'm sure she probably, you know, encountered him at some point staying at their house. But Zechariah had been made mute by the angel who he didn't trust uh, after being told that Elizabeth would give birth to John the Baptist, um, even in their old age, this childless couple. And so Zechariah um, wasn't able to say anything until uh, after Elizabeth had given birth. And so Mary is at her relative, her cousin's home when she sings this. And I thought, right, well, let's think about Mary's song in the context of our actual, regular, everyday lives. And so here I am. I know some of, sometimes kids, I remember, you know, kids in my classes, my parents, my dad was a teacher, so I never, I always knew better. But I remember some kids being like, well, the teachers just live at school. Yeah, no, they don't. And pastors don't actually live at church, although sometimes it might feel like we do. Pastors don't live at church, and so I thought I should probably preach this sermon from my home. Uh, so, welcome. Our theme uh, for today is those who dream so joy and not sew it like needle and thread sew it but like a sower went out to sow like casting seed in the ground which means that it's not something that we necessarily expect to to see results on immediately right if we think about sowing seed it's um, it's a process it starts small and grows bigger um, and so I have that in the back of your mind also as we contemplate this famous song that Mary sang together. Another reason why I wanted to preach this sermon from my home is also because of what Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians, that our whole life really should be a life of worship. Rejoice, pray, give thanks, correspondingly, always, without ceasing, and in all circumstances. Not necessarily for all circumstances, right? But in all circumstances, we can give thanks. There's this sense that life cannot be neatly divided between the God-related stuff and the not God-related stuff because there is no God, not God-related stuff, right? We can't divide our lives. And so since you are worshiping maybe in your, probably in your own home or on your own device, somewhere, that our whole life of faith is all of one piece. All of our life is our life of faith. So another thing to kind of keep in the back of your mind. As I reflect on the Magnificat, Mary's song, every time I do, the verb tenses always kind of get my attention. Because Mary is singing in the past tense about some stuff that hasn't exactly all happened yet, right? which then got me thinking about highs and lows, which are a practice that I know some of you do in small groups, maybe with your children or with friends and family, 
um, to think about sometimes in terms of daily reflections. I know small groups do it weekly or bi-weekly, however often they meet. A time to reflect on our lives and to share our lives with one another in our highs and our lows. Sometimes people think of, uh, talk about it as the roses and the thorns uh, with middle school confirmation. Um, sometimes I have talked about it as the wahoos and the that sucks. Um, and I'm struck sometimes by how hard it can be for some people to reflect on maybe the week or the, the day or the week past and the highs or lows that they've experienced and how often our focus is on what's coming and so we are we live in the try almost kind of trying to live in the future sometimes and things that we're dreading like oh I have a test and so that's my low is I have this test that's coming up um, or I get to see somebody a friend or I have this awesome thing coming and so we have this sense of anticipatory joy and that is what is happening in Mary's song it is full of anticipatory joy at the same time looking backwards she mentions Abraham by name but she knows her Jewish history her the story of her people and all of the times when God has come to the rescue of God's people. And so this looking ahead with joy is anchored in the steadfastness and the faithfulness of God acting for God's people. And the same thing happens for us too. Even in the midst of COVID numbers that are frankly horrifying even in the midst, for some people, of severe economic hardship. When we look at our history as God's people, we see God coming to the rescue over and over again. And we look ahead with anticipatory joy to the promise that God has made for us and for all of creation to redeem all things in Jesus. As Mary sings, she talks about the proud and the powerful um, being relieved of their swelled heads, right? That the hungry will be filled with good things, that the rich are going to be sent away empty so that they will have room in them for more than money can buy. Mary is singing the good news ahead of time trusting in the faithfulness of God. It's about anticipatory joy. And so as you look around your home today, or as you anticipate going back to work or back to school tomorrow, I encourage you to uh, maybe borrow some notes from Mary's song. Exalting in God, singing God's praise, hearing that just as God chose Mary, God chooses us too. To bear God into the world, to share God's love and grace and mercy. Think about the places where you can sow seeds of joy. Consider the places where maybe someone else has sown seeds of joy and now it might be your turn to water those seeds, to tend them with care. If you are a household that is keeping Advent with an Advent wreath and you have purchased Advent candles in a shop this year, you might have three purple ones and a pink one. Today is the day for the pink one. It's Gaudete Sunday, another fancy Latin word. It's joy. That color scheme comes from uh, the time when Advent was a whole lot more like Lent, penitential. And, but everybody thought that, you know, there's no way you could do that long of Advent. you got to break in with some joy there. And so... Gaudete Sunday, Joy Sunday, that's today. Because God is faithful. And we can trust God's promises for us. And what joy to be sent into the world, loved with a message of love, forgiven with a message of forgiveness. Let us go forth rejoicing. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
the whole church across time and space, let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, Shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming the good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your holy word in their hearts. Bless these congregations of the Montana Synod, Emmanuel Lutheran and Shepherd, and Grace Lutheran and Barbara. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living, especially farmers and ranchers here in Montana. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who've been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquakes, or storms, especially those suffering in Central America. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation, Christ the King Lutheran Church, and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in time of need. Pour out your mercy upon Barb, Sam, Priscilla, Grace, Dorothy, Bruce, Tom, Bob, May, John and Roseanne, Brooke, Butch, Bill, Duncan, Luke, and all those who remain before you. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Prayers from the congregation are invited. Hear us, O God. 
your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love, especially Lucy, martyr of the church, remembered this day. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. If you are worshiping at home, I encourage you to greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Good morning, I'm Mark Gilbertson. Hi, I'm Carolyn Gilbertson. To our Christ the King family, we really miss you and we look forward to worshiping with you in person very soon. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Tana Malmo. And I'm Jay Malmo. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. We have a handful of announcements this morning, as usual. Uh, if you would like to receive our daily Advent devotions and you're not getting them already, please send an email to office at ctkbozeman.org and say, subscribe me to the devotions, and you will start getting those in the morning. If you uh, signed up to provide a gift for one of the Meadowlark Elementary School families in need this Christmas and use the sign of genius to do that, thank you. We will be taking the gifts over to Meadowlark on Wednesday. So if you have not already returned your wrapped gift with the uh, code number on it uh, to the church, please do that as soon as you can. The office will be open 8 to 3, uh, Monday and Tuesday this week. Let us know if you're having any problems getting that done. And if you um, aren't able to purchase the gift you signed up for, let us know and we'll uh, shop on your behalf. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you also to those who signed up for the angel tree for the foster children. CASA, the court appointed special advocates, already came to retrieve those gifts. So thank you for your generosity and supporting those children in need in our community. Coming up this Tuesday evening, it'll be the sixth night of Hanukkah and Congregation Beth Shalom here in Bozeman has invited us and a whole bunch of other folks to participate in an online interfaith Hanukkah celebration. And so the information about that, the Zoom link, will have been in, uh, you should have gotten Friday, in Friday's email. And then also uh, it'll go out again on Tuesday morning with Tuesday morning's devotion to make sure you have it. And plan on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, logging on to the CTK Facebook page to participate in Holden Evening Prayer. That will be at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Christmas Eve schedule, I know lots of folks are anxious about that. Our Congregation Council will meet on Monday evening to nail it down for sure. Um, but do know that we are planning to send home a, in the e in email a do-it-yourself um, home liturgy for Christmas. We'll also have a pre-recorded service, much like this one, for Christmas Eve. Uh, and a tentative plan to do an outdoor something on Christmas Eve, uh, sort of a snowsuit service silent night by firelight out in the yard. So stay tuned for more details about that. Gracious God, with a sky full of stars and a world full of flowers, there should be no end to our joy. And yet, instead of decorating our very being with joy, we let it slip away like loose change. Instead of singing like Mary or dancing like David, we pass by remarkable beauty and love most days unfazed. Forgive us. Teach us the ways of children who laugh and dance and sing as if joy is the very thing that keeps them alive. Maybe they have joy figured out. Gratefully we pray. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to commune with one another. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for And if you are worshiping at home on your own this morning, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The creator of the stars bless you, your advent waiting and dreaming. The long-expected Savior fill you with love unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Amen. People look east, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today, love the guest is on the way. For us be glad the earth is bare, one more seed is planted there. Give up your strength, a seed to nourish, that in course the flower may flourish. People look east and sing today, love the roses on the way. Birds, though you have ceased to build, guard the nest that must be filled. Even the hour when wings are frozen, God for fledgling time has chosen. People look east and sing today, love the bird is on the way. Stars keep watch when night is dim, one more light the bowl shall brim. Shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People look east and sing today, love the star is on the way. Angels announce with shouts of mirth, Christ who brings new life to earth. Said every peak and valley humming, with the word the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today, love the Lord is on the way, love the Lord is on the way. Who are we? 
We are a Christian community practicing discipleship as we worship, learn, and serve. People of God, go in peace, dream God's dream, keep awake, sow joy, and prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's so much sorrow here, so much shame and hurt and fear. And this grief feels like the ache is never ending. The night is long, can't find sleep. Where's peace gone? It's so hard to breathe. It's time to dream fierce dreams like Mary did. Brave dreams like Joseph did. New dreams like Jesus did. Cause those who dream It's time to dream fish.